Hey, Mike. What? what? Who's got next? What's good, y'all? It's your man, Hezo, and welcome back to the Blacktop, where I always got next. So I hope everyone out there had a blessed Easter uh, on this Easter Sunday. Mine was pretty decent, other than my Hawks getting blown out the water. I hated to watch that, but I'm getting ready to talk about that in a second. So before I dive into everything, as always, if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button down low. Help me grow my channel out. I finally hit my first 100 subscribers, so shout out to y'all for all the support. I definitely appreciate it. And let's get right into it. So game one was tough, man. Game one was tough. <laughs> that was not what I expected in game one. Uh, Atlanta came out kind of flat. And now granted, I didn't really expect Atlanta to win this game. I'll be honest with you because just playing 48 hours, less than 48 hours ago in Cleveland, they had to fly from Atlanta to Cleveland to Miami over the last couple days. And while, while Miami was on a break since the end of the regular season, they've been on a lot of rest. So I didn't really expect us to win this game, but also didn't expect us to go out like that. Very bad game for us. Everybody played terrible. But here's the thing. Us as fans tend to, tend to overreact every game one of, of the playoffs. And this is only game one. And when I watch this game, there's a lot of takeaways that I took away from this game. And the first thing is fatigue. And I'm not, listen, I'm not the one to make excuses. I'm not going to make excuses for the Hawks because they came out flat. There's no excuse for that. They just, they didn't show up. They did not show up in game one. That's why Miami jumped on us. So credit to Miami. Played great. You can't take anything away from them, but the Hawks will be better in game two. And I'm confident of that. So when I look at this game one, again, fatigue, that definitely factors in. You didn't have a lot of rest coming back from Cleveland, but the shooting, the shooting just wasn't there. And I think that's the, the biggest difference was, and I know it's as, as crazy as it sounds and as simple as it sounds, but Miami made shots. Atlanta didn't make shots. And, and that's what it came down to. That on top of a lot of other things. I mean, when you look at Bogdanovich and Trey shot a combined one for 20 from the field. If you think that's going to happen again, come on, man. That, that's not going to happen again. Trey had the worst game of his career. And I really am annoyed because as soon as the game was over, I, I always hop on Twitter to see what the buzz is, right? And it's just, it always pisses me off when a superstar has a bad game because it's always jumping down somebody's throat about, you know, about a performance. And Trey played terrible. I get it. But let's not act like he's not capable of coming out next game and getting 40. They, they, tra they were trapping him, forcing him to bad shots, forcing him to bad turnovers. And Trey's got to be better. He knows that. The Hawks know that. The fans know that. The Heat know that. It ain't going to happen again. Trey's not going to shoot one for 12. Six turnovers, I think it was, and 0 for 7 from 3. Come on, man. Eight points, season low. Worst game of Trey's career. It's not going to happen again. Miami played essentially a damn near perfect game, and Atlanta had arguably, not, not even arguably, had literally their worst offensive game of the season. It's not going to happen again, man. The Hawks are too lethal offensively. So when I look at this game, yes, it was a blowout, but a lot of things went right for the Heat. They got a lot of calls, man. I'm not going to lie. They got a lot of questionable calls, and I expect that because it's in Miami, but they got a lot of questionable calls. That combined with Duncan Robinson, a.k.a. Jimmy Neutron head ass, <laughs> went off eight for nine from three. Come on, man. Let's be honest. That ain't going to happen again. Duncan Robinson is so streaky. And, and credit to him. I'm not taking anything away from Duncan Robinson. But come on, man. He, he's not going to do that again. He don't have that. He doesn't have that to do that consistently. And they were they were making shots. P.J. Tucker was making shots. And P.J. Tucker got a nice little floater, man. I ain't gonna lie. He actually impressed me with a couple floaters that he was hitting, looking like Trey out there. Shout out to P.J. Tucker, man. He, he played a very, very good game. Miami, everybody knew they are very tough defensively. No one knew, no one said this was gonna be an easy series for the Hawks. I obviously picked the Hawks because I'm a homer. I'm not gonna pick against my boys. But I didn't say that it was gonna be an easy series. I knew this was gonna be a tough series. It's a tough matchup. But... At the end of the day, it's only one game, man. Keep in mind, look at if you look at game two last year, of, and I'm not making comparisons, but when you look at game two last year between the Nets and the and the Bucks, the Bucks lost by 50 in game two to the Nets by 50, and was down 0-2 in the series and came back and won in seven, man. 
it's it's not it's not crazy to think that the Hawks still can't win this series. And if you don't think so, then you're just a casual. Now, again, if you're picking the Heat, that's fine. But to say that Atlanta has no chance in this series just because of one game is just ignorance. Because Atlanta has showed the resiliency all season long that they can fight and, and come back up with strong performances after a blowout loss. So one game doesn't define how a series is going to go, man. I mean, Memphis won, or I'm sorry, Memphis lost in game one against Minnesota. I still think they're going to win the series. Game one is just, it's just game one. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It's game one. Everyone relax. I can't even stress that enough. Hawks are going to bounce back, man. I expect Trey to come out extremely better in game two. I definitely expect Bogdanovich to come out better in game two. Nate McMillan, Nate McMillan is going to get back to the drawing board. Now, one positive I did take away from this game is John Collins. I think in the limited minutes that he played, 21, 22 minutes or so, he looked pretty good. He shot four for six from the field, had a couple boards. You could tell he wasn't exactly himself, but he had a couple nice plays. Give John Collins some time. He's going to come back, uh, Come back, I think, even better next year. Let's see if uh, Nate McMillan uh, inserts him into the starting lineup and brings the Congo back off the bench, which I think really is the move for them if they really want to contend in this series. Now, they definitely showed that not having Capella is a big loss because what he brings on the defensive end, what he brings on the rebounds, Miami had a lot of offensive rebounds that created those second-chance opportunities, and that hurt Atlanta at the end of the day. That's not why they lost the game. The, the reason why they lost the game is because of bad shooting. Not making shots compared to Miami making shots, and then a lot of turnovers, a lot of sloppy turnovers. DeAndre Hunter had a pretty good game for all you DeAndre Hunter hitters. Yeah, he only had 10 points, but he shot efficiently. I think he was 6 for 8 from the field, or 10 points. Oh, no, 14. It was 14 points, matter of fact. 14 points, 6 for 8 from the field. I think he was 2 for 2 from 3. For the amount of shot attempts, that's a solid game. So when you look at the couple positives that you do take away, and there's not many for, for getting beat by 30, but John Collins looking pretty decent in his return. DeAndre Hunter looked pretty good. Let's see what happens in game two. I'm confident that we can come out and, and steal game two on the road and, and Trey come out and have a big game because you know damn well Trey is going to hear that shit that everybody's saying and you know Trey is, is how he is. He's going to come out with a chip on his shoulder and come out firing. I do not expect Miami to shut him down like that they did, like they did in game one. And cr again, credit to Miami because they are a team that switches very well on defense. Trey didn't really get a good matchup that he liked because when P.J. Tucker and Adebayo were, were switching on to him, they did a pretty good job on him. And not having Capella with that lob threat, I think, was a pretty significant difference, difference in his game. Kevin Herter wasn't making shots. Bogdanovich shot 0 for 8 from the field. That's not going to happen again. The only points he had was from the line. So, again, 1 for 20 from the field between Trey and Bogey. Not going to happen again. Don't care what nobody says. You're not going to convince me that that's going to happen again. And I don't even really think, I, I, again, I'm going to credit Miami on that. But at the same time, I, I can't give them all the credit for the defense because Atlanta just missed open shots. I mean, let's call for what it is. Even Jimmy Butler after the game said they missed shots. He, he, he said, I'll be honest, they missed shots. So Jimmy Butler knows we're not going to come out like that again. Came out flat. I do not expect that for game two. This was kind of a rant video. Uh, I'm, I'm as Well, as I'm recording this, the Celtics and Nets game is on. Um, I had to record this real quick because I want to do my reaction. I am going to be doing a reaction game uh, for every game this this series for the Hawks and Heat uh, because I am a diehard Hawks fan as well as some other videos I'm going to do uh, with some reactions and all that. So the Celtics were up 12 last time I seen on the Nets. So I ho I'm hoping that the uh, Celtics can pull out that uh, this game because... I want to see the Celtics beat the Nets. <laughs> I'm not a hater. I just, I want to see it. That's, I, I picked the Celtics. So tough game for the Hawks, man. Uh, definitely a tough game. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Now, real quick, I know y'all Heat fans are eating that shit up because I got a lot of heat for picking the Hawks. Everybody was said I was tripping. I was sipping on something, man. It is what it is. I'm all for the criticism. I'm not going to pick against my guys. I don't care. I'm not going to pick against my guys. I got a ton of confidence in the Hawks. We made an Eastern Conference Finals run for a reason last year. We, we're not just going to come out like that in, in game two. And if we do, then we in trouble. <laughs> and, and I'm going to call it for what it is. If we come out like that and get blown out in game two, we in trouble. And, it, and it's probably going to look really bad. But 
We'll see what happens in game two. Uh, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Leave a like, and I will catch y'all next episode.